Hello, two Ps, and welcome to your next uh, lesson on solving equations. Our goal today, I can solve linear equations that have variables on both sides of the equal sign. Sometimes when we solve an equation, there will be a term with the variable on both sides of the equal sign. If this is the case, then we pick one side of the equal sign to be the home of the variable, and then the other side will be the home of the constants. So let's take a look at example one. Example one's kind of a no-brainer here because this one has only variables. And if it has only variables, that will be the home of the variable. So I'm going to call this the home of the variables. And on the other side will be the home of the constants. So now we have a look at it and I say, okay, on the left-hand side here, if that is the home of the constants, then what is 6x doing there? It's not a constant, it's a variable. So let's get rid of it. And to get rid of a positive 6x, we subtract 6x. But of course, if I subtract 6x, I've now upset the balance of the equation, and I have to make that balance right again by subtracting 6x on this side. Now this side has only 10, which is just a constant, so now I have only constants in the home of the constants. And on the other side, I have negative 2x, and so I have variable terms on the side that is only variables. But I still want to know what 1x is. And in order to know what 1x is, I have to get rid of this negative 2. And to get rid of a negative 2 that's multiplying x, we divide by negative 2. And of course, if I divide by negative 2 on that side, I have to divide by negative 2 on that side as well. So this side, those negative 2's cancel, and I just have 1x, because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So I have 1x, and on the other side, I have negative 5. Moving to our second example, this one has variables and constants on both sides of the equal sign. So it's actually up to you to pick which is the home of the variable and which is the home of the constant. So I usually suggest that you put the variables on the left side and leave the constants on the right. So now I look at it, and I'm going to work from left to right. So I'm going to start on the left side. The left side is the home of the variable. If it's the home of the variable, this negative 2 needs to get out of here. So I'm going to eliminate that negative 2 by adding 2. Remember, to get rid of something, you do the opposite of what it's doing. But if I add 2 on that side, I have to add 2 on the other side as well. So now what I have on this side is 4x. And on the other side, I have 2x plus 3, because that 1 and 2 go together to make 3. Now, this side has only variables on it. That means I move to the home of the constants, and I say, 2x, you are not a constant, so you need to leave. And I get rid of a 2x by going minus 2x. And if I subtract 2x on that side, I have to subtract 2x on that side. So now I have left just two x's on this side, and I have a three on this side when I uh, put like terms together. Now I want to know what one x is, so to make this side say one x, I divide by two, because two divided by two is one. And if I divide by two on that side to keep the balance of the equation, I do exactly the same thing on the other side, and I divide by two. So now my x is either three halves, or you can change it into the decimal 1.5. I don't care which one you use. So I'm going to go through a few more of these so you can watch me do this. Or better yet, how about you pause the video and you try to do these yourself and then turn the video back on and see if you did them the same way as I did. Now looking at this equation, it has a constant and a variable on one side, and the other side is only variables. So if this side is only variables, let's call that the home of the variable. And then this side is the home of the constant. So if that is the home of the constant, then x is out of place. x is not a constant. It needs to go to its own home. So we are going to subtract x on both sides of this equation to make the x leave the home of the constants. This side now says 7, and this side, 2x minus x, is simply 1x, and we're done. x equals 7. Looking at the next question, 
it has a variable and a constant on both sides of the equation. So I usually suggest that you pick this side to be your variable side and this side to be your constant side, though it doesn't really matter. So if this side is my variable side, then negative 5 needs to take a hike. To get rid of a negative 5, I need to add 5. And if I add 5 on that side, I have to add 5 on that side as well. So this side is simply 3x. On the other side, I have to put that 5 with the 7, and I get a 12, and I still have a minus 3x. So now that I have only variables in the home of the variable, I turn to the constant side, and I want only constants in the home of the constant. So this 3x that has a variable with it needs to take a hike. So I need to add 3x to both sides. Now that I've added 3x to both sides, this side is 6x, and this side is 12. And now I need to get only 1x on this side, so I need to divide by 6, because 6 divided by 6 is 1, so now I just have 1x on that side, but of course, whatever I do to one side, I have to do the same thing to the other. So this is now x equals positive 2. And our next example is very similar to the one we just finished. I have a variable and a constant on both sides of the equation. If I have a variable and a constant on both sides of the equation, I'm going to choose this to be my home of the variables and this to be my home of the constants. If this side is the home of the variables, then this term, which is constant, is out of place. So I need to get rid of it. So I add 10 on this side, which will make it go to 0, but whatever I do to one side, I do the same thing to the other, and so I add 10. So on this side of the equation, I have negative 6x. On this side of the equation, I still have that 3x, and now I have a plus 18 when I put 8 and 10 together. Now that I have only variables on this side, I turn my attention to the home of the constants. And if this is the home of the constants, then 3x is not where it needs to be. So I need to get rid of that 3x by subtracting 3x. And if I subtract 3x on that side, I have to subtract 3x on this side as well. So now if I have a negative 3x and a negative 6x, I have negative 9x on this side. And getting rid of the x's on that side leaves me with only 18. Now lastly, I want a single x on this side of the equation, so I divide both sides by negative 9. And negative 9 divided by negative 9 is simply 1, so this side is now just x. And 18 divided by negative 9 is negative 2. Now solving equations is one of the few times in math where you can actually check to see if you're right. If you have the right answer, when you put the x in your equation and do the math, um, it will work. That means that the two halves of the equation will actually be equal, just like the equal sign says. You must keep the halves separate when you're working with this. The equal sign in math is sacred. You must only use it when things are equal. And since we are checking, we don't actually know if they're equal. So I'm going to check part C. Part C, the left side of that equal sign, said negative 6x minus 10. And the right side of that equal sign said 3x plus 8. And we are checking to see if x equals negative 2. So if I'm checking to see if x equals negative 2, I am going to sub negative 2 in where the x was. So the x was right here. And we know that that 6 in front is multiplying it. And so I get negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12 minus 10 leaves me with 2 on this side. Now, if, that, if x really is negative 2, if I got the right answer in part C, when I sub negative 2 in for x on this side of the equation, it should turn out to be 2 as well. It's got to come out to be exactly the same answer as the other side. So I'm going to put negative 2 in where the x is. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 8. Negative 6 plus 8 is positive 2. I got the same thing when I subbed x in for both sides. That means I got the right answer. And I can just say left side equals right side and give myself a big check mark. I know I got it right. And that concludes today's lesson.